Hello, and welcome to chapter 5.3 from the Introduction to Statistics Think and Do book. In this chapter, we're going to look at the mean and standard deviation of a binomial distribution. And one of the nice things about this is um, we can start using continuous probability distributions to estimate binomial probability distributions. And specifically, when we went back here, you might recall from 5.2, we were talking about an unusually high number of successes and unusually low number of successes. And there was a pretty subtle difference because then something was unusually high if the probability of x or more was less than 0.05, and something was considered an unusually low number of successes if the probability of x or fewer was less than 0.05. And that's a little tricky. And um, also, in addition, the, the fact is we can only use our table for certain numbers of successes and failures. You know, if you recall the, um, the, t the binomial tables, I have them for various n's, n is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, but then it sort of skips over here, um, sorry for all the scrolling, 10, and then it jumps to 15 and 20, so if you have if you have a number of trials different from what's back here, you can't really use the table, and um, so, there's, so, so you might be able to save yourself a little bit of time and effort um, at calculating unusually high or unusually low number of successes with this um, stuff we're going to learn in 5-3. So 5-3, the mean standard deviation of a binomial distribution. Let's get into full screen mode. Okay, so we have a, if we have a binomial probability distribution with n trials and a probability of, of a single success is p, then the mean is given by n times p. Simple, right? And the standard deviation, sigma, and that's a sigma, so the standard deviation is given by the square root of n times p times q. And again, q is 1 minus p, as it will remain throughout this book. Okay, and this, getting the mean should is actually somewhat intuitive. This formula here for the mean, it should be fairly intuitive. And here's, here's an example of why. You have a huge can mixed nuts with 60% cashews. You randomly select groups of 20 nuts. What is the mean for the number of cashews obtained? Well, you would expect, on average, you would get 12 cashews, right? 60% of 20, and that's all it is. It's just 20 n times p, which is 0.6, or 12. So the mean should make total sense. Well, the standard deviation is much more difficult to derive, so we're just going to hope that you can remember this. Right, the standard deviation. The formula is actually pretty easy. Um, so the standard deviation, sigma, is just the square root of n, 20 trials, p, 0.6, q, 1 minus p. And when you plug that into your calculator, you get 2.2. So we have a mean here and a standard deviation here. So now we can actually get a little shortcut to unusual number of successes, right? Because if you recall, we had an earlier definition of an unusual number of successes as being, you know, a value that's more than two standard deviations away from the mean, or a z-score that is bigger than two or less than negative two. And now we get a, a z-score. So suppose I have x successes. Right? I can calculate the z-score the same way I always have. x minus mu over sigma. That's the measurement of the number of standard deviations above or below the mean x's. And so now we just put in our two uh, formulas. There's the mean from a binomial distribution. And there's the standard deviation from a binomial distribution. So we're good to go. And again, just as in chapter 2, if my z-score is greater than 2 or less than negative 2, we'll call x an unusual number of successes. So let's do our same problems, much quicker with this little rule. We have a huge can of nuts, 60% cashews. You randomly select 20. If you got 6 cashews, would that be unusual? 
Well, remember, we did the mean and the standard deviation in the problem right up here. We got those right here. 12 and 2.2. Right. So, if you got 6, then we calculate the z-score of 6. That's just x minus mu over sigma, 6 minus the mean over sigma, negative 2.73. Alright, that is less than negative 2. So it's unusual. Six cashews would certainly be considered unusual. What about 9? Well, I plug 9 into the same formula. 9 minus 12 over sigma, 2.2, get negative 1.36. That's actually between negative 2 and 2. So there's nothing unusual about that. All right, and remember, we're expecting about 12. What if you got 18? Would you consider yourself unusually lucky here? Well, sure, because when you plug in um, x equals 18, 18 minus mu over sigma is 2.73. That indeed is, a, is an unusual number of cashews. It's on the high end, so it's much more than you'd expect. So this is greater than 2. So that's actually pretty easy to do, much easier than um, adding up all those probabilities from the binomial tables. Okay, so here's one more application of this situation. So a national study finds that 48% of Americans claim to be satisfied with their job. So 48%, that's the national average of Americans who are satisfied with their job. Now, you have a company with 220 employees, and when you do a survey, only 85 of them claim to be satisfied. And so, um, and so that's well below 48%, because like 48% is about 50, so you'd expect about 110 to be satisfied, and you only got 85. So we're asking ourselves in this question, is your number of satisfied employees unusual? Right. You'd expect about 110, you're getting 85. Is that unusual? Well, first we need to get the mean and standard deviation for the number of satisfied employees uh, in groups of 220. So the mean n times p. Oh, by the way, there's one little catch on here that I forgot to mention. In order to use this, Mention this. We need n times p and n times q to be bigger than 0.5, bigger than 5, and that allows us to use the um, normal approximation. So we, so that way we know the the number of successes is normally distributed, and we can do that whole two standard deviations thing. So that's the first thing I'm checking here. If you look at n times p, that's um, certainly bigger than 5. It's like close to 110. And you look at n times q, that's 220 times 0.52, and that, that, that again is around 110. So certainly bigger than 5. We're good to go. So when we calculate the mean, we get 105.6. So that's how many um, satisfied employees you would expect on average from groups of 220. You have 85, so you're below average. Getting the standard deviation is the square root of n times p times q. You have to do that in your calculator, and you get 7.4. So we have a mean and a standard deviation. So we're going to take our x, which is 85. We have x minus mu, 85 minus 105.6, over sigma, 7.4, which is negative 2.78. So as far as the number of satisfied employees goes, the z-score is definitely less than negative 2. Uh, and so that makes this um, value unusual. It makes 85 unusual. Right? It's way below average. Um, so we conclude 85 satisfied employees is unusual from a, from a group of 220. All right. So that's how you define things as usual and unusual without all the um, adding up of the probabilities. Um, but again, you do in order to use this sort of z the z score method, the sort of cheat method, um, we do need to have n times p and n times q both bigger than five. 
And I believe that wraps up Chapter 5 for us. We'll go and do the summary worksheet, and that'll be it. So I will see you on the Chapter 5 summary worksheet, if you are so inclined to go there. Provided I can exit. Always takes a little longer than I want. All right, I'm feeling lucky. Nothing. I don't know what this program always gives me a little problem. You can obviously stop your video. Oh, there we go. Okay, bye-bye.